Have you ever had the need to send eight HDMI sources through one coax cable? Let me tell you about this. Thor Thunder 8. <laughs> eight HDMI sources to one coax cable output. <laughs> You can have your own cable system. <laughs> so yeah, you can use this for any kind of like a hospital care center. Hotels use these things where they basically have their TV set up with their own uh, private channels. Uh, security systems for multiple uh, security cameras. Oh gosh, you can use this, you name it. You come up with an idea, let me know in the comments. It's, uh, there's so many uses for this. It also does closed captioning. So this unit particularly has this uh, unit, uh, plug here. So you can send closed captioning information through your through your system if you want to add that to it. Most of what I would probably find use this for this is just to do the HDMI sources through the uh, coax and modulate it through ATSC and then mix it with an antenna source. But you can also mix it through uh, cable sources in certain areas and through uh, DVB-C if you're in your uh, four channels. Now for the setup, you're going to want to um, hit the return button here and you'll have these uh, four, the arrow keys, it's kind of not the best placed, but it'll have the uh, the, the IP address, so the main menu, and you can configure it here. The main thing you'd want to configure is the uh, IP address and then you can just work with, work it'll do a lot of work with this on a web interface. But you can change like your encoding uh, selections and all that uh, through this. It's just it's really tricky to do it through this little little um, thing. So I recommend to set up the IP address, which is um, go in here to the IP address, and it will have a default IP address. But you just might want to put it down to an IP address that your router can read. So you just go in there and main modulate network. Hit OK network IP address and then just edit it and change it to whatever IP address uh, that you would uh, be able to uh, you would need for your for your settings and then you could uh, edit it on your home network a lot easier that way uh, another thing is you gotta plug it in to a router sort of have like have a rack in your house or just a stack in my case uh, so I'll show you how I have things set up here in this mess of devices that I have here so just for just to create some sources for the purposes of this video so I have this iRecord device. It's not showing anything on it, but it basically sh uh, is outputting the HDMI source and just showing the screen. Uh, I have a over-the-air TV um, box here. That's just, I'm just using that as a source for the HDMI source because they have the extra output because I use an old CRTV downstairs. I love it. Great for me TV and all that. Uh, so I have this handheld uh, satellite finder, which I've plugged into a satellite. I've been using this as a satellite receiver, and I got plugged into uh, an, one of the HDMI ports that's plugged out there. So I'm using these for sources, just for this test. And it's uh, humming away here, um, sending the signal to um, through the coax cable. So I have basically your regular splitter here. This is where the signal is coming from the modulator, just in one of the... I'll turn it over here just in one of the uh, uh, ports, which is actually, instead of an output port, it's going in there and it is actually combining the signal and sending it through the house. Just one of these inexpensive uh, splitters, if you want to send it six ways, you can do it that way. Um, mess of wires back here. So the back of this unit here, I just have like my power cord and the three HDMI um, uh, plugs into it. I can do up to eight HDMI plugs. I need like a lot of stuff. And then I just got the regular RF out. It's hard to see that there with these wires. The RF out is just going out right there, going out through the um, basically my little master antenna system. Or I have another one of these things upstairs that just does one channel and uh, create my own cable system. So for products like this and many other products, go to thirdbroadcast.com. And for the modulators that we're going to review in this video, it is the H Thunder X. And they do have different models, one with a um, a one port uh, HDMI, some of four port HDMIs. This one has a full eight port HDMI. So if you have several, 
uh, video sources you'd like to distribute. You can do that. Basically, this is the idea of how you distribute the signal with one of these, uh, with your multiple HDMI sources, and distribute it over a single coax cable. All right, so if we're looking at the web interface for the Thor Broadcast modulator, you just simply need to um, set on the front panel of the Thor Thunder 8 um, your local IP address. So I've done that and it's one, in this case, it's 192.168.1.188. And it'll bring you to this on the browser, which is um, admin and password. So, so basically the username and password on a lot of these things by default is admin and password. So just for this demo, I'm showing you that. You can set up whatever password you want, write it down in the manual so you remember. I'm just gonna log in here. I'll log in again. There we go. So here is the modulator decoder. And I have mine set to ATSC. That's probably where I'm gonna be use the modulation I'll be using on my channels for the most part. Uh, you can use DVB-T, DVB-CJ.838A, uh, ATSC, J, 838 a, uh, J 83B and ISDB, wherever part of the world you're in. I prefer to use the uh, ATSC format uh, just because in North America I can set up one of these and uh, have it so that um, I can watch my over the air channels and then slide in a, and mix the channels together and create my own channels and then have I like, on a local closed circuit system on the same cable you can uh, add your own channels so that's pretty cool but whatever the application that you may need for the part of the world the world you're in you can always do that as well I just to give you an example like if you were to switch it to DVB-T it would show you these options if you were to switch it to DVB-C it would give you the QAM options But I'm going to leave it at ATCSC for now. Now you can actually add the channels. Like uh, I have a I have a modulator, um, same brand Thor Broadcast that I actually broadcast on channel six because there's nothing broadcasting on that, and so it's like comes up as six point one, uh, and I just have my a uh, feed running on that as well. So actually, I have multiple modulators on this circuit running at the same time, which uh, works really well. And uh, so I'm only, as I said, I'm only running three channels. I'll just go to the status, take a look at that. And uh, just because I have the three channels, I don't think, well, I guess I probably could find eight HDMI output devices in my house, but I, I really don't need this. I would not suggest this for the home use, but definitely for the hospital, uh, long-term care facilities, um, apartment buildings um, with a satellite to shove on the roof this would be awesome with a master antenna system and you can add uh, several satellite channels or, or basically whatever content you would like you can add that to this but uh, it shows you the status and another thing is, is it shows you the frequency or channel that it's on I'm probably going over some channels here which is blocking out my system but this is just for a demonstration purposes only I'm going to go to the encode, um, goes to the input source, CBVS or HDMI. The bit rate, which you can raise or lower, I'm just going to keep it at the default because I'm not mixing multiple channels. This is basically one HDMI, so may as well use the full bit rate that you want. But if you do want to uh, change it, you can do that. Also, if you want to change the channel name, program name. So when you scan it in on your TV, it will come in as VAT1, VAT-1 here. You can simply just name it whatever you want and just apply and it will it will work uh, that way. I think everything is like VAT2, VAT3, and the audio options will give you the ACC or AC3 or the MPEG-1 layer audio whatever if you have an older TV set and you find that 
this this is probably where you want to want to come to if you're finding you got one TV set maybe it's older just play around with these settings till you hear the audio and it will now probably start working for you so it does give you options there and here's a uh, just one of the uh, HDMI and I'm gonna go to a network so yeah I'll show you your default gateway your subnet mask and your IP address your IP address is the main important thing that's where you're gonna want to connect uh, via a web browser there you go and if you need to when you're setting it up you want to maybe change your password so it's not gonna say admin and all that if you forget your password on the front panel there is a re, uh, um, factory default and you could just factory default it and then it will get rid of the password for you you can update your firmware the way I like to do things is if it ain't broke don't fix it, fix it. so I'm just gonna keep the firmware the way it is uh, configuration and there you got your factory set load configuration or save your configuration which is probably a good idea to back up one of these things just so you do have a backup so there's not a whole lot extra to this It's a very straightforward which I like it's not super complicated it's not rocket surgery to get this up and going and one thing uh, I just wanted to note when you plug a device in it will just auto detect the resolution so I have a few lower de lower uh, uh, resolution settings and uh, it detected the 780 and 720 on, on uh, the devices for its input the one thing this will not do is it can't like put eight, eight channels on one carrier that's where I, I think I'd like to see a de uh, see a modulator decoder be able to do that, especially for lower quality, like say 720p channels. So if you want to rename a channel, you simply would just go to the uh, encode menu. See on, on channel three, for example, it says VAT three. It only lets you use seven characters. So let's see here. Thor three. I would apply so I'll just scan through here and find VAT2 and channel 17 should be Thor 3 and there's the feed I just gave it whatever you know whatever name you want and you can put it on whatever channel and frequency that you want it as well um, to show you how to do this I'm gonna get my HD home run So this is a great way if you're using ATSC, I just have mine set up on US broadcast. It'll scan through the channels and you can figure out what channel doesn't have anything on it and you can put your channel on. Because sometimes the channels they broadcast on aren't actually their physical channel. So this is my Thor modulator that I have upstairs on a satellite receiver. This is not part of this setup. So here's some over-the-air channels that I got that hooked up to the antenna and uh, has like several channels on there. So that really adds like to uh, my, my own private cable system. And channel 14 should have the modulator that we're looking at. Yeah. So it says that one and it has the source and I could click for you. But I, uh, I actually want to look at the, this one. So I'm just showing you the um, just in Vil C. Um, this is just my um, satellite <laughs> handheld meter thing tuned into Galaxy 19, you know, just for a video feed. So there, I got one one feed going there on channel 16 and 17 says 18 vat three. I'm getting a hundred percent signal because it's basically right on the the system here. This should just be like on a menu off of my video recorder. Then, yeah, so this is the on-screen menu that I'm broadcasting just for a test feed because it has a HDMI output. And I'll close that. So that gives you an idea. Um, the interesting thing is that I haven't seen how to turn it off uh, with this device is there might be a deactivate uh, setting that I haven't seen in here but it will show like basically a Thor broadcast if, on a channel that if you don't have the um, an HDMI source plugged into it it will just go to this default Thor um, logo here 
and then channel 19 all has their own um, their own channels on it and it's just going to show nothing because I have nothing plugged into it. Eight independent HDMI and SDI inputs individually select for each of the eight channels you can output. HDMI is HDCP compliant for use with any source. SDI inputs include support for closed captioning 708. Eight outputs separate clear CATV RF channels. QAM, ATSC, 8 VSB, DVBT, ISDBT select all in the GU, uh, GUI. RF output of each of the eight RF channels can be individually set to the frequency and modulation standard on two QAM and three ATSC or four ISDTB, etc. DBC Annex A and B QAM 64 and QAM 256. Supports full HD video up to 1080p at uh, 59.94 slash 60. Other resolutions included R, 1080i, 720p, 480i, also supported low lactacy, supported three different lactacy settings, 100, 500, and 1000 MS. Video encoding rate up to 25 megabytes. MPEG-2 video encoding, Dolby AC3, MPEG Layer 1, Layer 2, and ACC audio encoding. VCT, virtual channel number and name supported. Frequency from 50 megahertz to 900 megahertz. NMS web interface controller, easy to use web GUI interface, setup and stats, LED stats in front of the panel, HDMI in blue or SDI in green for easy to use video direct link. Powerful processing with the best MPEG-2 video encoder chip. First high density HDMI and SDI input modulation on the market. Lowest cost per channel is perfect HD resolution if for every application from live sports, house of worship, concert theaters, malls, airports, hotels, military, and private enterprise. So please hit the subscribe button for my YouTube channel and my other social media content. Also, I would like to thank my Patreons and the people who have donated through PayPal Donate with the cost of making some of these videos and buying products to review. Also, if you want to support me over on Patreon or PayPal Donate, a few dollars a month to help support production of my videos so that I can continue helping people with tech stuff like this. And thank you to all those out there who has supported my channel and my video work and online activity over these years by subscribing, by liking, by commenting. I really appreciate the interaction with you guys.